Hello everyone, it's a great time to be a Rangers supporter as we look ahead to our trip to Leipzig but there is one dark cloud on my horizon and that's I've got to do yet another one of these bollock shaving adverts. Now regular listeners will know just how enthusiastic I am about the sinful practice of uh, depilation of the downstairs but uh, they've sent me a whole big script about the Champions League um, but that's not what the action's at, so I'm not doing it. Uh, the action is in the Europa League this week. And if you want us to take on Germany, a well-renowned nation of perverts, it should be said, uh, the Germans, you know, we all know about the coffee tables. Well, you can do so with testicles that look like snooker balls and they'll be cleaner and smoother and rounder than anything Ronnie O'Sullivan is going to hit with his stick this week. You can do that by getting a Manscaped product. And there are no better products for those of you who enjoy getting your, your bollocks, you know, bare. Uh, they've got this amazing ceramic blade and skin safe technology. Um, your snags will be reduced. Who wants snaggy nuts? Nobody. That's who. Uh, there's also a nose, ear and hair trimmer, which is good for people like me who these days, you're honest to goodness, um, my ears, uh, uh, eyebrows and nose are starting to resemble the Ramones. So it is a very useful thing to do. 9,000 RPM motor powered, 360 degree rotary dual blade system. Sounds very fancy when you boil it all down to the fact that what you're doing is um, basically balding your, your bouncers. But if you're going to do it, then go to manscaped.com and you'll get 20% off and free delivery with the code RANGERS at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free delivery. So bounce into the Europa League with balls so smooth you can eat your dinner off them. Hello everyone and welcome to Heart and Hand, the Rangers podcast. We are delighted this week to be looking ahead to a European semi-final. My goodness, doesn't seem like 14 years since we had the last one. No, wait, it really does. Joining me to discuss what lies ahead and of course the, the match of the weekend with Motherwell is first of all our tactics guru, Mr Adam Thornton. Hi David. Have you been referred to as a guru before? No, usually it's more offensive than that, but thank you. Yeah, so it be, begins with a C rather than a G. And um, not in any way making up the numbers, but hey, if the cap fits, it's David Marshall. How you doing, guys? I have been in the spirit of this week. I've been living my life, or I'm going to live my life this week like it's 2008. So I've been studying for my standard grade exams and uh, I don't, I don't know, fiddling myself, but usual week. For me to go back to 2008, I'd have to go on at bit least destructive. <laughs> two benders a week, be gubbing, what it was, it was about 150 pills every fortnight, <laughs> and uh, split up with my missus. So I might stick to a more modern outlook on 2022, if that's okay. Before we get to it, by the way, Adam, you're going, aren't you, to Germany? Yes. Uh, you're on the you're on the school trip. I'm going to yeah. Germany independent. Dave, are you going to Germany? Oh fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, folks. That, this episode was totally worth it from me and Adam's point of view, right? We we di we didn't win two world wars to travel to Germany. That's all I'm saying. No, we well we did. I mean technically we should own it. Have you ever noticed actually people always say Yanks are bad for this, they'll say to you, if it wasn't for us, you'd be speaking German. It's like, well, pardon me for saying this, but we did win the war in there not speaking English. So, you know, I don't think that's that's true. Anyway, let's go to Fur Park on Saturday like Adam did. Adam, um, straight away, the team was, was different. The manager clearly looking ahead to Thursday night, which I think is right. And I know some people were saying that, oh, you never know and whatnot, but selections like that are justified by result. And he got the result. So I think you've got to say, you know, mission accomplished. Yeah, I was quite happy with it on the basis of resting players before Leipzig. But like you said, if imagine we drop points and then something else happened further down the line and we'd have another Mullerwell turning point, I think that's that's too much for for one season. Um, it, it was a gamble. Um, tough to say if it worked in the first half, given what what happened. That we'll probably come on to, but certainly the second half, the tweaks that he made once we went down to 
to 10 men uh, one is the game. So, yeah, absolutely justified in the selection. Yeah, Dave, you and I were discussing this match on, on WhatsApp as it played out on Saturday and both pretty much at the same conclusion, I think, which was 30 minutes, absolute control. Motherwell with a, let's be honest, a fairly sonambulant performance. They're one of these sides that uh, they've made the top six and they've got the bucket and sand castles out uh, looking ahead to, to the break. But then Rangers somehow managed to contrive a situation where it was all up for grabs again. And uh, real credit to the manager for that halftime reset because after 30 minutes, I thought of of pretty straightforward dominance and it looked as though we were going to go on and wrap up a fairly comfortable 3 or 4 nil. Um We managed to get dragged into a match. Yeah, it was... Um, I suppose in a way you could say it was uh, good of us to, to make a contest out of it. Um through our own uh, desire to, t- to turn the game into a mess. Uh, yeah, first half hour, Rangers totally in control. Um, Murrowell, yeah, they're they're already on a hold holiday mode. Um, I think they're the prime example of just how dirt the standard throughout the league has been this year. The fact of what one one game since the turn of the year and managed to make the top six. Um, I think that speaks volumes of the league as a whole. Uh, but going into that second half, you know. I, I, I can't say honestly that I expected the performance we got in the second half. Thankfully, we came out with the, the right attitude and you have to give credit to the manager. We've been quick enough to criticise him when he's deserved it. But no, you have to you have to praise him because he managed to get the team out there in the right mindset and uh, put in the right performance to make sure we got the got the result. Yep. Um, in the first half, Rangers, I thought, started pretty well. We had that you know, unusual front three. And Adam, probably one of the best things to come out of this whole game was... Uh, well, I suppose it could be said to be bittersweet because it's something we haven't had, which is fringe players making an impact. Obviously, Sakala and Wright being the, 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 the main two. That's something we had last season and, and just didn't have this season. But in the first half, I thought the movement among the front three was good. They were interchanging well. Uh, Diallo probably should have scored, I think. You know, you can see that he's, he's not got a lot of confidence in the way things have gone for him. Of course, he's... He, and it was the right decision. He was the one to take off, but uh, it's still a bit unfortunate when he was doing okay. Um, but we take the lead, and it's a. Uh, I think it has ended up being Scott Wright's goal. It was kind of tough to to see. Good set piece. Uh, Rangers changing the angle. Goldson head it back. Kelly makes an error because he's a bit unfortunate. He gets a hand to it, but it deflects backwards. But there's Wright following in for the goal. And again, just you know, set pieces we were absolutely deadly last season hasn't quite been up to that. I don't think our corners have been that bad. It's a, an eternal sense of frustration to yeah, every football fan, corners. Um, and then you're, they're usually shocked when when I was, when we find out that, that 3% of corners lead to goals worldwide. That's the average. And so uh, I, it just was nice to see Rangers playing on that front foot with a bit of verve. Tav had won just past the post. And at that point, as, as Dave mentioned, we looked pretty set. Yeah, we did. Um, other than the, the game against Red Star Ibrox, so we came up with a, a, a new corner routine. It's all been been very samey. We've got the Aribo front post run, and then most of the time we've just got the kind of balls into the the back post. But it was good to see them change the angle. Probably Tavernier's cross was was over hit, if we're honest. And Goldson does very well to to bring it back over. And I think Kelly nine times out of ten he's he's going to try and put that over the bar. I don't know if he's just got. Um, got his angle wrong a little bit or he's off balance um, and it kind of gets bundled in. I think it's one of those where Kelly will want to give it to Wright and Wright will want to take it. So um, he, he may as well. But yeah, it was good. It was it was interesting having three <clears throat> wingers, if you like, um, up there. It might be a little look ahead to, to Thursday night, which I'm sure we'll come on to. Um, but yeah, you're right. When Diallo goes off, I think obviously it proves later on in the, in the game, given that it's Cal and Wright. Uh, one is the... One is the game, but I think Diallo was always the one to go off, and it is a wee bit unfair. I'm kind of on record as saying I think the criticism he has had is way over the top. He's, he's almost like a, a a lightning rod for for the poor transfers rather than being a, a poor transfer himself. Um, I think it's a wee bit fair. I think the manager probably could have used them in, in a few more occasions than he has. It is fair to say that the one or two times that he has probably played and not played well is is fair enough. But I think he was looking quite sharp. Um, when he when he came on, uh, as were the other, the other three and fringe players getting getting some benefit, absolutely hundred percent. I'm a I'm a big fan of Sakala, and people don't people don't think he's very good, um, which is absolutely fine. Uh, I think people have in their head an idea of what a winger or a forward should be, and if anyone dares to deviate from from that and be slightly 
out of the norm, then people either can't handle it or, or don't want to handle it. Um, but there is absolutely no mistake that it might be absolutely chaotic, but things happen. And I love I love players where things happen around them. He has goals this season from very, very limited numbers and he, he just makes things happen with that, that chaos. So I'm not counting him as anywhere near one of the best signings we've had over the last four years, but he's certainly nowhere near poor and he's more than more than contributed so far this season. I thought he was really, really good. As was right, last four games or so he's come in um, maybe in the old firm, he, he didn't have the best game, but what he did do was he got us up the pitch a little bit. His quality wasn't there, but certainly in that second half, he got us up the pitch a little bit. Um, but in the game uh, on, on Sunday, I thought he was he was really good, really purposeful and really dynamic in using his pace well. Well, there's two discussion points then come out of what you just said. First of all, on Sakala, um, I, I kind of tend to agree because I think he offers us something that we don't have, which is that, that chaos. But the problem with a player like that is they look untidy. And that's what catches your eye. Yeah. And there are plenty of times where he does something just you know, <laughs> unexplainable and inexcusable. And you're like, why did you do that? And then there are other times where he brings, you know, a bit of, a bit of quality, a bit of skill, a bit of something. Um, I, I tend to think that, you know, first year he's done okay, uh, especially in a side that's been up and down. So uh, I certainly wouldn't be, be chasing him out the door in the summer. As for Scott Wright, I think that nails it. it it's, there is ability there, but he, he's got to get in product. And Saturday he did. And you, you just do that more often, Scott. You know, that's what we need from you. We need you to be getting shots away. I think that's probably the frustration with him. It's not even that, like, you know, his shots are terrible. It's he, he just delays so often when he gets himself into a good position. It's almost like he gets overwhelmed, I think, Dave, with... Should I cross? Should I shoot? I, I just he needs to be more single minded because the ability to get himself into those positions is there. Yeah, I think you know um, it can be very simple to to bring things down to a binary agreement. Sometimes I know Adam has got a particular distaste for that, but I think you've nailed it on the nailed it in the head there. The end product just needs to be better from. I think there is a lot of raw talent there, he's obviously got plenty of speed, uh, I actually think he did quite well in extra time in the, the, the semi-final, I think he was we used him the right way, we just used him as a nuisance and um, in terms of defending well, we, we didn't actually have to do that much uh, defending in the extra time, we were pretty much on the, the forefront for most of it but he seemed to be a good blocker and just being able to again to be a nuisance in, in, in that sense as well Um the 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 goal he got in, in Sunday was a, was an absolute topper. I think we were all caught a little by surprise <laughs> the the fact that he firstly he took the shit on and uh, and he scored from it. It just it's again it comes down though to the simple fact for him to be a success at Rangers long time, he has to do more of that. He has to improve his end product. There is there's a player in there. But it just needs to be better in that final third. If he, if he can't do it there, then you know he's he's going to end up a Hearts player or something in the future. And it is because I think with players who don't have ability, it's fair enough. You go, well, just no up to it. But he does, and it's just about unlocking it and displaying it. Um, we'll come to his It's the hardest thing, though, isn't it? No, if they've yeah, not it's... got it in their head, like I don't think you can really teach that. I think it, I know, but in, in his instance, it's just a, just make up your mind more often than you do. You know, he gets there, and then it's it's not even sometimes the wrong option. It's no option, mm. and it's delaying and it's waiting, and it, it just looks like confusion. Whereas instead, you know, just simplify it for him. When you get in that position, have a shot, just have a shot. You know, just yeah. get get something away. Um, but to me, to he, he did him, it at the weekend. He did to me with him. It's maybe this is maybe way off, but. Kind of feels like a personality thing. Like he is a nice guy. <laughs> you can you can tell that when when you're uh, after after the match and said it was. He just seems like a genuinely nice guy, and he's maybe not got that killer instinct to to do what he needs to do every single game, which is absolutely fine. I think there's probably more players that that don't have it in the world than than, than do. But that finish is is incredible. The way that he obviously Sakala is running with the ball, but right just kind of peels off the 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 central defender and, and he puts the ball in the textbook position through the legs of the defender and into the bottom corner. That's a really, really good finish. And I guess, yeah, like we said, the frustration is we've probably seen that from maybe someone like Jordan Jones a couple of years ago as well. But a, they also are, scored a belter at Fur Park last year. Yeah. So it's A, are they going to be able to do that consistently? And B, which is probably more likely, they're probably not going to get a game consistently enough to prove whether they can do it or not. It's just one of these frustrating things when we, when we buy 
these players who are projects or squad players, etc. But we've we've kind of covered that um, over the years. That is, we have a core of players who who go to the well time and time again. They are very very good. It can be difficult to then bring in players um, with tight funds to come in and instantly improve the team just because of of that or the whole Morelos syndrome that we've spoken about before. What great players are going to come and sit on the bench and get fifteen games a season? Not very many. No, it's just Harry Kane syndrome in it, and that's why Tottenham, with all their money, find it difficult to to get it because people look at it and go, "Well, I'm not going to play." Um, and it's the same with Morelos. But Dave, always good to have a qualified ref with us when we we talk about refereeing. I, I thought Nick Walsh had uh, a strange old game, to to say the least. Let's let's start then with the thing that seemed to kick it off a game that had trundled along. I think quite quietly yeah. um, and that was Leon Balligan's red card I've got to be honest and say straight away I thought ooh and when the red card came out I wasn't surprised seeing the replays I was even less surprised uh, you know I think in Britain as a whole we get caught up in this intent which mm-hmm. I always find a slightly fallacious argument because people don't intend to, to make a foul you know nine times out of ten people they just mistime it so intent isn't a rule, never has been. There's nothing in laws of the game that that suggests that. It's if you foul somebody even by accident, it's a foul and there could be punishment for it. He he gets the ball, and again, I think that's a legacy of of previous days where people say, well, he, he touched the ball, ergo it can't be a foul. No, it doesn't work like that anymore. Um, he is unfortunately out of control, and the proof of that pudding is that he, he does go over the top of the ball, unluckily, but he does, and smashes into the boy's leg. I thought it was a red card. Was I wrong? Uh, no, I don't think you were wrong. Uh, just on that, in terms of intent, there is actually, I think with this is where confused people, there is, you know, wording in, of intent in the rules, but it's more to the point of, for example, if you, if I was to, if we were playing a game and I was to take a big swipe at you or if I tried to punch you and I didn't make contact, it doesn't matter because my intent was to punch you. I, would, I should yeah, still get sorry, a card for that. Yeah, sorry, I meant within a kind of yeah. tackle, yeah. But, but I, think that, I think you're right though to bring that up because I think people interpret that into into what is a, a normal foul uh, when it's that's not really the use of intent uh, within the laws of the game. Um, yeah, for me, it was the right decision for the referee. Um, Balogun, I, I don't think there was any malice in the tackle. I don't think he goes in to, to injure uh, the player or, you know, um, or, or whatnot, as we're talking about there. But he is, he's took the eye off the ball. He's not in control and it's ended up being a, a dangerous tackle. He's went right over the ball and it could have been a very nasty result. It's um you know, it's it's unlucky in a way, but it's it's a red card every day for me. Referee got it absolutely spot on. He doesn't need to make the challenge either, Adam. That's what annoyed me about mm. it. It was almost like this guy's danced past, was it Diallo and then Barisic? I'm 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 gonna take the ball off and I'm gonna be the one. But no, I had a really good view of that it was kinda of right in front of me. Um and you just see him from from the back going in and I was like, oh my God, I, think the mm-hmm. I was like, oh, that's a, is that a bad one? I was like, yes, that is a bad one. I'm not really great with the whole refereeing decisions and what's this, is this got intent, or is that got intent? But as soon as I seen that, I went, oh dear, that is awful. Yeah, the, the eye test, I think, is always a good indicator. Do you immediately go, oh, and if so, um, there's probably something in it. And I think we were right to, to think that. The frustrating thing, of course, Dave, is what then happens, which is Ojanya goes in and just absolutely, I mean, he jumps into the tackle, uh, takes out Scott Wright. It looked a red to me, and the ref goes up and awards a yellow. Mm-hmm. That's the kind of thing I think that frustrates. But again, you're the qualified ref. Was it a red or was the ref right? I think it could be a red card. I think it's one of those ones where it's, uh, you know, in the, the orange area, I think it, it could have went either way. I actually think this, in terms of if you want to talk about intent again, I think there's more intent in this one to hurt the player than there was in the in the, the, the Balogun challenge because it's uh, the Manuel player comes in and it's his second leg that comes in swiping away. There's no, you know, there's no idea to to, to get the ball for that. He's done that to to hurt the Rangers player. <laughs> I if the referee awards the red card, then I think um, I don't think Manuel could have any complaints. Similarly, if it's a Rangers player getting sent off for that, I wouldn't have any complaints. I think it's one of those ones when VAR comes in next season, if the referee was to send him off, it wouldn't get overturned. But yeah. the same way, if it's a booking, then they wouldn't be telling him to send the player off either. Yeah, it's, it's a subjective one. And that's why VAR isn't going to change everything. It's all, There's always going to be a degree of, of subjective things. The, mm-hmm. the reason I wanted VAR, and I've been quite up for it, but this is offside, because I think our linesmen are 
dreadful. I mean, I think they're even worse than than the referees. The one that I did think was unforgivable, Dave, and it happened three times, is Scott Arfield, boy runs around him, Arfield pulls him back. It's a booking. I had no problem with it. It's yeah. always a booking. You see it any live match you watch, player just goes, nah, you're not going any further and I'll take one for the team. No problem. It's a booking. Three times Motherwell players yes. did the same and didn't get booked. <laughs> that I could not understand. Yeah, you know, I was sending block capital messages into our WhatsApp during the game for this. Uh, this is one of the ones, in terms of refereeing overall, that really pisses me off because it's the inconsistency of it. And I, I don't rate Nick Walsh uh, very highly as a referee because he is very inconsistent. There's just no, you know, there's no reasoning to, to that. It's just poor refereeing. He's, the Arfield one was correct. It was a booking. But as you said, then he misses three identical um situations where the Murrow players should should have been booked. I believe one of them was uh, Mugabe, the Murrow player who ended up getting booked for, for the penalty and we're going to talk about that. But that was the right decision. But um yeah it was it's just it's just really poor refereeing and it's something that isn't going to be solved by one of the things that isn't going to be solved by VAR is the inconsistencies of the refereeing. Yeah, because none of them would have been referred to VAR. That's the no. thing. So uh, but uh, again, you know, it's not like he doesn't see them. If he doesn't give them, fair enough. It's a bad decision, but I get it. But when he sees them and gives a fill and doesn't book them, I think well, you can't make that decision. That, that, that's just No, you're ignoring not, the laws of the game at yeah, that point. It's, yeah. it's not available to you to make that decision. Once you've blown for the free kick, it is, in fact, a yellow card. So, Adam, glad you're here as well. We've got a ref there, now a tactics guy. I was kind of expecting us to switch to a 4-3-2, uh, a la the glorious days of first season Beal Ball when we seem to get a red card every 20 minutes. And he didn't. He changed to a 4-2-3, um, which sounds a little odd, but I think we saw how effective it was in that second half. Yep, um, it, it did. And I, I think that was probably because um, uh, the rest of the first half the ball wasn't really sticking. Obviously, we lost the the goal um, with Kamara doing what Kamara seems to do in the worst possible time and overplaying. Um, but I think after that, we, we kind of lost our heads a little bit and the ball wasn't sticking with um, Sakala and right up top, which you wouldn't really expect it to. Like we said, they're both players that have pace and play on the shoulder. They're not really coming deep and receiving the ball. So kind of stands to reason. But yeah, he did. And, and it, it, was, it was very, very brave. Um, I guess, and we can say it's a, a relative dead rubber game, but it was very, very brave to to then have that two man midfield push Scott Arfield up into centre forward, false nine, whatever you want to call it, and then have Wright and Sakala wide. Um, and from that moment on, we effectively went three on three with um, Mullerwell in terms of the defenders because they've maybe got a more attacking uh, attacking fullback. So um, it, it was good, um, uh, and it was brave from the manager again. Another tactical tweak which has. Which has came off mid game. There's more of those than than haven't. There's probably more than than Gerard managed um, the rest of the season. So that's really really good to see. Um, Sakala for me off the left just needs to happen all the time. We we spoke about what he is and what he isn't uh, earlier on. Um, he doesn't have a left foot. Um, sometimes he looks like he doesn't have a right foot. If we're not if we're being if we're being <laughs> totally honest, but coming off the left, cutting inside, that's what he does. That's that is his route. You can call him one dimensional if you like, but he hasn't played there very much for us because of Ryan Kent. I'm sure we'll come on to that when we talk about, about Thursday. But that is where he should play for me. That is where you get the best out of him. Um, and we've seen that within, what, 60, 70 seconds of, of the game kicking off. We did, carried the ball, but then absolute dynamite effort from Scott Wright. And we're 2-1 up. And I think Motherwell were kind, kind of shocked. I think they just assumed the game would go a different way. And they never really recovered from it, in all honesty. And Rangers were very comfortable. We kept them very much at arm's length. And then, of course, it was topped off by the award of the penalty. And Luke was slagged the ref. So, you know, credit he gets this one right because Sakala is, in the parlance, too honest. And it's a, a pet hate of mine that people complain about, oh, players go down too easy. And, well, yeah, because nine times out of ten, if you see a player try to stay on his feet, he won't get the award. So, of course, the motivation is there for them to go down, Dave. But it is a foul. Mugabe comes in, doesn't get the ball, gets fashion Sakala, which means he can't play the ball. And then, you know, he's he's kind of follow through, touches the ball, um, Mugabe. But it's a foul. It's a yellow card and it's a penalty. And I thought he got this one spot on. 
Yeah, no, you're you're actually right. Again, it's the right decision by the re- the referee. Um, it's a it's a penalty. It's a a stone wall for me, but it's not a straight red card because there's uh, a clear attempt to to win the ball. You know, he's he's tried he's tried to get the ball from for a good five six yards before I actually fouled him. Uh, again, yep, I have to say, you know, as much criticism the referee got this decision spot on again. And of course, Adam, your boy, James Tavernier, no problem, 3-1, job done, and then his magnificent response to Motherwell fans trying to give him abuse when he said, 3-1 with 10 men, behave yourself. I love that so much. What a guy, what a guy. Um, <clears throat> that penalty as well, was there was a, a wee period there a couple of weeks ago where he was maybe being a wee bit rash with them. He missed that one, didn't he, in, in, in the cup, but that one's absolutely inch perfect, right into the side netting, which is just an incredible finish anyway. Um, maybe not quite the pressure of, of weeks before, given that we're already in, in the lead, but it just completely killed. I think, the, to be honest, I think the second goal killed Motherwell's spirit. You can imagine them coming out at half-time um, and thinking, right, we'll, we'll give them a really tough game here. They've got 10 men, and I think that goal just right after half-time probably killed their spirit, but the penalty, I think, obliterated them. Yeah, I think that's that's true. Um, so a good, solid win, especially in the, the circumstances. Uh, we were able to rest guys like Kent and Lundstrom ahead of what is a very, very big challenge on on Thursday, on Thursday night. I think the sense of frustration lingers, though, that, you know, how the hell did we manage to lose four points at home to this Motherwell side? They're not very good. You know, 6-1 and, and 3-1 with 10 men away kind of suggests that. And it is the story of this league campaign, Dave, the amount of stupid yep. points that we've chucked away. There was the three draws under Gerrard earlier in the season. I mean, make no mistake, Rangers should have cantered to this league title and it's been through complacency at times. It's been through not having the correct attitude, especially at the start of the season, and then panicking when push came to shove. Yeah, you know, when I was uh, criticising the standard of the league at the start of the show, that very much includes ourselves. Um we have not been good enough uh, throughout the course of the, the league season. And the reason that uh, we're not going to win the league now, and I'll be honest, I don't think we are going to win the league now, because as we've seen on Sunday, uh, on Saturday in our own game, uh, these teams are on holiday mode. They've got nothing to play for, so I just don't think there's going to be enough want for the teams below us to take uh, any points off Celtic. Uh, to be quite honest with you, we we will lose the league because of results like the two draws at home to Motherwell, the draw at home to Hearts, the dropping points to an absolute dirt Aberdeen team. That's what's going to cost the league title. As frustrating as the Celtic games are, and it's never nice to lose them, obviously, we've lost this league by not being able to take care of the bread and butter games. No, it's, it's a fact. And, uh, yeah, and, and- you know, sometimes if a team runs away from you, it's hard to accept and you, you whine and moan, um, at, well, we need to be better, but you, you can at least understand it. In this case, we completely... This is a title we've it. lost. Yeah, we've lost this title rather than them winning it, which is very frustrating indeed. But we move on and we look ahead now to Thursday night. Adam, uh, it's a challenge because Red Bull Leipzig third in Germany. They are a tremendously good side. They have a couple of suspensions, but their quality, their technical level is is high. Their confidence level is is very high. And of course, they're the first leg at their gaff. Yeah, um, it is a bit of a challenge. Uh, I think they are based on, certainly based on form over the last 15 games or so. They're, they're second behind, behind Bayern Munich uh, in terms of the league form. So since the turn of the year, I think they've been They've been very, very consistent. They did lose at the weekend. They did concede, concede two late goals. So um, I haven't seen them back yet, but there will be, I'm sure, with all German teams, there will be absolutely ways to ways to attack them. Um, be interesting to see how he how the manager lines up for this. He's, he's kind of varied his, his approach sometimes in, in Europe. If you think we've had Kamara as a 10 sometimes, and then he's kind of moved away from that a little bit. Um, the, the lineup in Braga was a bit strange, I think, to, to everybody. I know we were, we were running with... Morelos not there, but but Ruth was there, um, and it was maybe a little bit strange. Arfield playing as the as the nine, but you maybe understand it, understand it a bit more now, given what we've what we've seen, and obviously Ruth not not being there. Um, so it will be a big challenge, I think, for us. We need to be compact. Um, I really wouldn't be surprised to see the back three. Um, if I'm honest, from from the start, I think that would give us the solidity that we need because they are absolutely rapid. Um, up top. 
so I would be wouldn't be surprised to see that. Um, certainly in in the away leg, and then for me, just as much pace on the break as as possible. Um, even if it is players that are maybe of less less technical quality, we need that out ball. Um, we need goals and Ambassy to be able to hit hit those players on, on the break because if you're Red Bull and and you've been watching the Rangers games, you you know that you want to try and get a very, very healthy lead in, in the first game. That's certainly how I would approach it if I was them. You want to come out and, and overwhelm us um, at, at home because you don't really want to become an Ibrox with even just a 1-0, I think, just now because we've all seen how how special those last three knockout games have, have been. So if that that's how I think they would play it, and I would combat that by being solid and having that pace on the break. Yeah, I, th- I think that's huge for us. I think uh, Kent being rested... You know, shows you his importance for a game like this as ever. And Sakala does give you that particular option. Um, I think a three five two with them two wouldn't wouldn't be the most stunning thing in in the whole world either. Kamara's an interesting one though. Um, he's been used a lot in Europe in different positions, Dave, this season. Um, including as Adam says, that bit further forward is almost like a sort of uh, attacking defender where he used to get in there and sit on people and be there to Harry, but. In all honesty, he has not had a good season. We saw it again at the weekend, that doziness that he cleared from his game last season, but that has crept back in this year mm. um, when he, he should have dealt with the ball, didn't. And of course, it leads to Motherwell's goal. Um, it, I could see the attraction for the manager of putting him in there. But for me, if Lundstrom is going to step back, then for me, it should be Davis in there next to Jack. Yeah, I wouldn't play Kamara because he's um, nowhere near uh, warranted being in our starting eleven. He's not within our best eleven players uh, this season at all, and I don't think anyone can can make any any arguments towards that. If we're going to pick between the two, then Stephen Davis all day long for me. I think since he's came back into the team, you can see, you know, just his presence in there brings a a calmness. Um, not only to the team, but to the, to the support as well. Um, yeah, for me, it's Stephen Davis all day long. Yeah, I think you can look at the selection on Saturday, Adam, and, and look to see who didn't play, therefore are going to. And Jack is one, Lundstrom's clearly another. Uh, Kent is a third. In terms then of how that midfield lines up, clearly the first instance is you've, you've got to be tidy, you've got to be prepared to run and... and you know, track people down, you've got to make sure that you can do that. That's why perhaps he might be tempted to to put Kamara in for the legs. But again, I, I just worry that his form, just as Dave says, hasn't quite been up to the mark. Yeah, it's a, it's a no-go for me. Um, I'm afraid I kind of get that side of it, but that's, that's not... Kamara isn't <clears throat> doing that right now, as far as I'm concerned. Um I think I'm on record as saying I think Davis has been very, very underused. I know there's been some some injuries, but not enough that he, he hasn't played more than five games under under Van Bronckhorst. Um, you just need he just make I tweeted this the other day. He just makes you feel safe when when he's playing. We need somebody to take the ball. He does somebody to take the ball under pressure and play simple passes. There was a point in the the semi final in the first half where Celtic were pressing us very, very high, and McLaughlin the crowd were starting to get nervous. McLaughlin was was playing it out, and it was all very precise to. To Bassey and to Goldson, and then they'll clip it over the tab, etc. And, and it worked more often than it didn't. But the one thing that I don't think Lundstrom and Jack can do is they can't split the, the Celtic forwards and, and get that risky ball through and turn and sweep it the way Davis does. We've seen it against uh, seen it against Motherwell uh, a couple of times. He receives the ball um, facing his own goal and just clips a kind of pass over to the fullback, which takes out which takes out the attackers. Given how high Red Bull are going to press, hundred percent are going to press, we'll probably have those circumstances again. So. I would look to have him in there. Um, Davis, Jack, and Lundstrom to me doesn't scream a, a hugely complimentary trio. So that's um, my concern. If if there is a way, and maybe it is Lundstrom stepping back, as we've said at some point during the game into a three, um, or not. But I think we would just have to deal with it because for me, I would want all three of them on the park. Jack and Lundstrom are more than capable of um, being Davis's legs and, and being Davis's physicality. But I think if I use this analogy with Ruth on the other side, but if the ball is in front of our goal, the only person I really want on it is, is Stephen Davis, to be honest, so that he can pass it out pass it out of the way. So I think there needs to be a role for him in this one if we want to maintain any kind of um, possession. Where do you see Joe Arebo playing? Um, <clears throat> this is, I guess this is the attacking debate, isn't it? I, I would play him. 
to be honest, um, again for that someone who can someone who can keep control of the ball in, in higher areas. So, um, I would probably be going with Sakala, Kent, and Aribo up front. Um, we did move in the second half later in the second half on Sunday to uh, a kind of four four one with Aribo up on his own. Um, maybe he could play centrally. Uh, to be honest, Sakala, Kent, and Aribo. We could, just alternate depending on on what you need. Um, I think in the game, I don't think we can debate about Sakala on the right or whatever. But I, I think certainly the other two can play in any of any any of those three positions. So, um, for me, that would be my three. Might be a little bit harsh on on Arfield, but I think Arfield would probably come into his own more uh, at the weekend and maybe in the home game. Um, for me uh, against Leipzig, so that would be my three. Um, I think is Aribo, Kent, and Sakala in whatever combination. So, so I'd love to see Sakala on the left, Kent through the middle and Aribo on the right, but any combination of that would be fine, I think. Dave, this is something that, you know, I, I'll be honest, I never thought I'd see, from about 1995 onwards, I never yeah. thought I'd see Rangers in a European final. So it was a dream to get to Manchester. Obviously, you know, it would have been great to win it, but still. As football has developed over the past 14 years, where... UEFA are quite honest about their exclusionary practices for clubs from small TV markets such as ours. It, it, it's got further and further away. I think it's important that we try very, very hard as fans. You know, I want the players to be thinking, you know, that nothing other than success. But as fans, we've got to try and enjoy these because they don't come round that often. And if football continues down this path, which I see no, uh, I see no evidence that it won't, then they are not going to come up regularly. No, European football um, is deliberately designed to prevent clubs like Rangers uh, making it this far into competitions to making European finals. And I, I can only see it getting worse as well, particularly with this looming threat of a uh, European Super League. I think what we'll see is UEFA bending over backwards to appease the clubs that threaten to, to break away and do their own thing. I was I was pretty much at the game being a bogey and definitely when we got to the point where the top four and the, the, the top four leagues were automatically qualifying for the, the last 16, uh, sorry, for the group stage of the Champions League, that was that was for me when, you know, they they took the mask off and there's no facade around it anymore. This is what it's supposed to be. We want to make it a playground for the big money teams to play and the rest of you are just there to make the numbers, quite frankly, and it's the right teams we want to be making up the numbers, which doesn't include uh, Rangers. So, yeah, but we're going to enjoy it. 2008, I never thought I'd see it. I certainly, after that, didn't think um, I'd, I'd see it again. That's what made losing the, the final 2008, you know, so hard because yeah, you could just never see, see it happen again for it to happen now, all these years later, and particularly what we've went through in, in the last uh, 14 years. It, it's going to be incredible, you know, so I'd, I'd say everyone just enjoy it, particularly those of you who are maybe too young to properly appreciate 2008, just absolutely lap it up when it comes. Aye, they don't. They don't tend to come around all that, all that often. And you know, there is, I don't. It's difficult because I don't want to be saying it to the players. Just enjoy it because that sounds a wee bit, you know, Macclesfield in the third round of the FA. Cup. No, you fuckers go win. Yeah, yeah you, you're not to enjoy it <laughs> unless you win. Yeah, but us as fans, we are, we are allowed, I think, to enjoy it. And Adam, there is something really special about the light nights coming in, these massive games, you see the adverts on the TV for them and we're in it. Absolutely, 100%. And like I said earlier on, um, those three, particularly the home games, obviously we've got Dortmund away, which we were both uh, lucky enough to be at as well. But but those three home games for me, as I've said on, on Extra uh, a couple of times, go straight into my top five European games. I think that it's just been very, very special occasions. And the big difference from Manchester in 2008 is... We've been battering these teams basically uh, in this in this knockout stage, which um, was not the case back then. Um, I think without doing the maths, we probably did more scored more goals against Borussia Dortmund than we did in, in the run probably in, in two thousand and eight. So um, it is very very special. Um, I know there's a lot of um, anger about about losing the league and maybe the the team people revisionist comments about the, the, the team or, or um, how, how good they've been, whether it was just a genie in a bottle season, last season, 
it's a surefire way to shut people up is is to go and, and get to the get to the Europa League final. And I think the the four years that we've had from from this team um, in, in Europe anyway uh, is the best of my lifetime by by probably quite a stretch. So it would be very very fitting if they if they go and do it. But you're right, it is special. I was twenty two. Uh, around about Manchester, maybe didn't appreciate it as as well as I could have. I'm not quite sure I even remember the game. If I'm going to be be brutally honest, um, in terms of how much I, I drank, but if we were you drunk, it, Adam? Yeah, just just a bit, not just like yesterday and the day before and, and Friday, but yeah, yeah, um, you've become a disgrace, this Rangers, <laughs> this, this Rangers. That's what they're doing to me. This European run, they're, they're they're doing things to me. But yeah, if we get to the, this is why I don't touch the stuff. If I'll yeah. cross time. it touches you though. Mm. <laughs> Badly, if we get repeatedly. To the, if we get to the final, um, it's a it's a tremendous achievement. You can say the only achievement is is winning, but getting to the final, as you said, with with the money disparity now and with the the closed shop that it is is becoming for for those top five leagues to be able to do this, to be the only team that um is still in the competition, um that had to play a qualifier. I think that I'm not sure if even in the in the conference semi finals any of those teams had to play qualifiers. To, to be honest, that might be might be way off. So to be the only team. There shows um, how difficult it no. is for us and how much we've achieved. None of them had to play qualifiers for the conference, put it that way. Exactly. Um, you know, they, they might have dropped in from other tournaments, but they, they didn't have to play qualifiers for that. And, and again, you know, if we'd reached the semi finals of the conference, uh, that would yeah, still have been great because, you know, it's a European trophy, you want to win it. I think Leicester and PSV, for example, are, are kind of good examples of that. But you know, to, to be in the Europa League, which is, is massive, and we know that because it's got the, the Champions League place there as the incentive, then that's absolutely tremendous. Right then, folks, that will do us uh, for today here on the free show. If you want more build-up and coverage, uh, Adam and I will be in Germany, so there'll be reports from Leipzig later this week. Full coverage on Heart and Hand on Patreon from just £1.50 per month. Just sign up there. Go to patreon.com forward slash heart and hand. And uh, it's a very good time to be joining us. There's a lot of good stuff happening. And if you want to come and see us live the night before the Scottish Cup final, which is also two days after the the Europa League final, so if we get there, it could be one messy week. But if you want to come and start your weekend with us in Dunfermline, if you're over towards that way, then myself, Adam and Martin will be on stage with Kevin Thompson, the successful uh, League Two winning manager of Kelty Hearts, but of course former Ranger and Rangers coach. He's always uh, interesting to hear his take on things. And uh, we'll be there on Friday, the 20th of uh, May. So I'll put the description up, uh, I'll put the, the ticket link up in the show description. Come along and see. There aren't many left. I think there's only like 20 left. So if you want to come, please be quick. My thanks to our executive producers in London, Mike Lee and Paul Miles. And my thanks to my two guests. First of all, David Marshall. Pleasure as always, Matt. And Adam Thornton. Thank you, David. I will see you both in Germany, minus Marshall. Yep, I'm very much looking forward to going to Germany and seeing Adam and not seeing David. But, Dave, I want you to to know this, mate. I will, I promise, take photos and send you them regularly while you're at work. I think this is unfair. I'm not even one of the better ones. I'm I'm happy for you guys, but... That's true. There are a few who who aren't. Um, But I don't know. I'm just the punching bag that's here. True. (laughs) Yep. Right, listen, we all have our roles in life, okay? (laughs) Don't blame me, blame God. Right, thanks for listening, folks. We'll be back. uh, Well, we won't um, because we'll be travelling, but uh, uh, Cam, will be back later in the week with Hart and Andy Extra to review the match and look ahead to, oh my goodness, we've got an old firm game at the weekend. So plenty happening in the world of Rangers. Take care, everyone. Stay safe if you're travelling, and we'll speak to you again this time next week. Take care, everyone. (laughs) Bye-bye. Hello folks, it's David here and I would just like to take a moment to ask you to go and check out our sponsors NordVPN. Internet security, very important. I'm sure it's something that you're concerned about as well. Me, I like to know that I'm the person in control of my data. I live on my phone and the amount of stuff I do on it from banking to documents to private messaging, I need to know is secure. We all know that there are bad people out there who will come in and uh, try and get our details and try and spend our money for us. NordVPN prevents that, especially if you're using public Wi-Fis or you're using Wi-Fis away from your home. If you use NordVPN, 
Caribbean, you are safe and protected. It also allows you to take short holidays to places if that's ever required. It's a brilliant product. I use it every day and highly recommend it. And you can get a tremendous offer if you go to nordvpn.com forward slash heart and hand. That's nordvpn.com forward slash heart and hand. Or use the code heart and hand to get up to 70% off your NordVPN plan. You'll also get one additional month for free. Risk free with Nord. It's 30 day back money, uh, 30 day money back guarantee. So all you need to do if you don't like it is just say nope and you'll get your money back. So go and check them out. As I say, it's very important. You'll get peace of mind. Go to nordvpn.com forward slash heart and hand. <laughs> 